Good afternoon. Uh, this is Pastor John Garza again. Uh, like every Friday at 6 o'clock, we've got a, a Bible study going on. So uh, today we're going to be in uh, Psalms 11, and we're going to talk about faith under attack. Faith under attack. But I hope that everybody had a great week, and I hope that everybody's uh, staying safe, and uh, 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 hopefully you're spending some time with your loved ones. And um, uh, and so, you know, we just, uh, we consider it a blessing uh, to be during the, uh, to be um, an American and to be a Christian at this particular time, because um, the the options are narrowing, and the excitement of uh, the conventions are here, and uh, we just we need to go vote. Everybody needs to go vote, and uh, I hope that you guys are doing fine, and that your that your body is doing feeling fine, and that you're healed through the power of the Spirit of God, and also that you are experiencing a certain level of joy. And so um, I just praise God for everyone that's listening. And um, so let's go ahead and open in prayer. Lord, Father in heaven, I ask that you pour out your anointing upon this sermon, Lord, upon this teaching, and that you yourself would be in the midst of it, Lord. Let everyone hide behind the cross, Lord, and that your name would be lifted up. And I ask in the name of Jesus for every person that's out there listening, Lord, that you would bless them and that you would keep them, that you would protect them, watch over them, Lord, and that you would keep them safe, Lord, wherever they go, not only from COVID, Lord, but from any evil thing or any evil person or any accident of any kind, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, because these are your precious souls, Lord, and they love you and they, want to, and they turn to you when they need help. And I thank you for all of this, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. Okay, let's go ahead and start. Um, <clears throat> Psalm 11. It says, uh, In the Lord I take refuge. How can you say to my soul, Flee as a bird to your mountain? <clears throat> For behold, the wicked bend the bow, and they make ready their arrow upon the string, to shoot in darkness at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed... How can the righteous do? What can the righteous do? <clears throat> the Lord is in his holy temple, the Lord's throne in heaven. His eyelids behold, his eyelids test the sons of men. The Lord tests the righteous and the wicked. And the one who loves violence, his soul hates. Upon the wicked he will rain snares, fire and brimstone, and burning wind will be their portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous, and he loves righteousness, and the op. The upright will behold his face. Um, an incredible uh, psalm, and it was written by David. And this was, <clears throat> he was going through several little conflicts during this time. First of all, <clears throat> he, was, uh, <clears throat> he was being attacked by, he was being held captive in Gath. Uh, and he was also afraid of his son Absalom. And also, uh, he had just come through a grueling trial with Saul the king. So he was uh, under a lot of pressure and a lot of, uh, <clears throat> a lot of uh, confusing situations because he's the, the, the man after God's own heart. Remember, that's David. And, and his confidence in God seemed to be in question here because he says, God, the word of God says, <clears throat> how can you tell me to flee to the mountain, to your mountain, when the enemy is, is, is there? They're bending their bow and they're getting their rifle ready and they're looks like they're going to shoot me down, you know. <clears throat> so there's a conflict. There's a conflict in faith right there. It's not a matter of him being personally attacked or physically being upset, uh, uh, attacked, but his faith is being attacked, and that's really the place where uh, we need to fortify ourselves and strengthen that part of us. That that faith is that will not die and will not shut down and will not back away and will cause us to move, keep moving forward because we have a destiny and we have a purpose in our life. So faith must always be fed. You've heard the story of the two dogs, the neighbor that had two dogs and he had a, yellow, a black one and a white one. <clears throat> and uh, every day they would fight, fight, fight and, and snarl and pull each other's hair and... And then after a couple of hours, what they would do is they would just sit down and rest and take a breather. And then they would jump up and attack each other again. And they did this day after day after day. 
And somebody came along and said to the to the man that owned the dogs, he said, he said, uh, these dogs fight every day. Does either one of them ever win? And the, the guy that owns the dog says, yeah, the one that I feed the most. The one that I feed the most is the one that's going to win. Wow, that's, that's kind of a, a simple illustration, but <clears throat> think about that for a second. Right now we're going through a pandemic. Right now we're going through all kinds of trials and difficulties, mm-hmm. protests and, and burnings of buildings, rioters, and all kinds of things. And we're being told to shut in at home, uh, not to go to church, but we can go and protest peacefully. And, and so there's a lot of confusing situations going on. And, there, and, and we're being told different things by different people on the news media. Uh, and, and, I mean, they're tearing each other to pieces. The Democrats and the Republicans are both tearing each other to pieces. And they're, t- they're all telling us something, and we don't know what to believe. And so when we don't know what to believe, then we then get into a situation where our faith is weak, weakened, and our strength is weakened, confusion takes over, and fear takes over. Because if we don't know what's coming up ahead, then the spirit of fear will come into us. Okay? There's two different kinds of fear. There's uh, 2 Timothy 1.7, which is the spirit of fear, and then there's the emotion of fear, where it says, Feed, uh, fear the Lord. Fear, fear the Lord. Fear an, uh, an um, awesome reverence to God. So fear is mentioned many times, but there's two different kinds of fear. The emotion of fear, which is healthy. It allows you to jump out of the way when a car is coming or run, fight or flight. Remember that? Fight or, fight or flight. Uh, God adds a little bit of energy for us to be able to run away from danger. Uh, that's it. That's in the emotion of fear. But if you hold on to the emotion of fear long enough, it turns into the spirit of fear. And that's what God does not want us to do. He does not want us to... To settle or allow the spirit of fear to come into us. Because once the spirit of fear comes in, then we're pretty much defeated. We're pretty much, uh, we're open game for the enemy, if you will. Because at that point, we don't know which way to go and what we're going to do. And so then, and that's where, uh, and that's where we are. The people that are, uh, think about this for a second. Who are the policemen that get killed? Who are the soldiers that get killed? I'm, I'm here to tell you that the policeman and the soldier in war and combat, the ones that get killed are the ones that, not, not 100%, but a lot of times what, when their heart is not in the battle. When, when the policeman's heart is not in his job, he's liable to get killed. He puts himself in danger. Same way with a soldier. So, I mean, we, our hearts have to be into it, you know, and we have to, we have, to have faith. And we have to feed that faith constantly by reading, uh, gathering together with other Christians and uh, watching and uh, Christian, Christian TV and listening to Christian music and constantly reading and studying the Word of God. Okay? And that what, what, what it does is it feeds our faith so that we don't, we don't fall out in the middle of a crisis. Okay? David was putting his faith into action, not listening to the bad advice that tells us to quit or to fall back. He's been determined. He's been detained at Gath by the Philistines. That's First <clears throat> Samuel 2, 11 through 14. How bad, how bad does it look? He has, a tar- he has a target on his back. The devil's out to get him, you know? And he will, he will get closer to the Lord through this situation. And, you know, when, when we're in trouble, the purpose of that trouble is, is to draw us closer to God, not to get us further away from God, you see? And um, the, uh, <clears throat> this uh, Psalm 56.3 says that, that the, the title of that is the dove of, the dove of Silence on Distant Places. The Dove of Silence on Different, different Places, or a silent dove among strangers, which means that we can sit in confidence and we can sit firmly with faith in God no matter what's happening, whether we're among strangers or in a different place. Confidence. Believe what you say. 
believe what you quote to other people. We have to have an attitude of fear. And not in Psalms 9, 9, the Lord will be the refuge for the oppressed and a refuge to those, uh, refuge in time of trouble. And then in Psalm 46, 1, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. See, and and God gives us a promise in Matthew 10, 7. It says, heal the sick, raise the dead, drive out demons. And then in 10, 16, Matthew 10, 16, it says, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. I'm, gonna, I'm telling you right now, Jesus is telling his disciples, he's sending them out like sheep among wolves. In other words, it's it's not gonna, it's going to be nasty. It's going to be bad. Uh, you're going to you're going to catch all kinds of hell. You see? And so what what has to happen is that like the disciples, they had to lean on Jesus, believe Jesus and trust Jesus that what he was telling them was the truth. That there is a place in eternity that they would go to if they remain faithful and they remain strong till the end. To whatever that end is. In Matthew 10, 28, it says, Do not be afraid of those that, that hurt the body, but rather rather, uh, rather those that can kill the soul. In other words, don't be afraid of those that, that threaten you physically or, or whatever. Threaten, uh, be yes. careful with the ones that will distract you and teach you a, a false and different philosophy or... Uh, foundation that will drag your soul off into hell that is see uh, what you lose here on earth is just physical and it's just a few years but we can't afford to lose eternity eternity is forever and forever and forever and a million forevers it will never end so what we do in the physical we have to test it against like jesus christ when he said the for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and he scorned its shame. And so, in other words, we have to look heaven-bound or heavenward for our faith. We have to believe that no matter what happens to us on this earth, that God is still in control and we're going to see the face of Jesus one day. Matthew 10, 28. Oh, I'm sorry. John 15, 18. If the world hates you, you know that it first hated me. You see, it's, it's, it's all full circle. Jesus came to this earth to do what? To destroy the thoughts and the attitudes and the religious strongholds that were in the church first and then in the world. You see, the religious people had taken Judaism and had taken the 613 laws and had created a dictatorship, if you will, on, over the Jewish people. And he came to set them free from all of that. Jesus Christ came to set them free and then show them the way to heaven. Psalm 9-9 again. The Lord will be a refuge in the time of trouble. <clears throat> Psalm 46-1. God is our refuge and our ever-present help in trouble and he will rescue us. Therefore, you will not fear though the earth change you're the ever-present help in trouble. You see, uh, <clears throat> the uh, <clears throat> through the waters, we go through the waters and will not be hurt. Psalm forty-three, Isaiah forty-three. You see, in the mountain, oh, the mountains quake at the swelling's pride. No matter what happens on this earth, the oceans, the tornadoes, the the the, uh, the hurricanes, all the stuff that's going on cannot hurt you because you belong to God. You belong to Jesus Christ. When we are standing, when we are standing in faith, then we are not alone and we cannot fall when we're standing in faith. You see? When, when, our faith is being attacked, we have to remember that the devil knows exactly how to take us down. He knows exactly what the target is. It's not, his, not your money, not your business, not your health. 
Your, his target is your faith. <clears throat> and when your faith starts to flounder, then you become open game for the enemy. Because he will take you down. <clears throat> because our hearts are not in it anymore. Now think about Amalek in the Old Testament. Amalek was always attacking Israel. <clears throat> but Amalek had a very, very peculiar way of attacking Israel. They, they never faced them front face to face. They never attacked them face to face because they knew that the Israelites were under the protection of God. <clears throat> so what the Amalekites did, they, they, they attacked the rear. And from the rear, they started picking off those guys that were, their hearts were not in the battle. They were slowing down. They were unsure of themselves. And he started picking those off from the tail end. And so we have to be very careful that we're, that our, our fingers are set forward, like in football, so that we, can, we, know, we know that we're only going to move forward. We're not going to move backwards. We're not going to go back anymore. You see? So we have to stand in faith. In James 1.3, he says, Perseverance must finish its work so that we may be mature in uh, mature and lacking in nothing. James 1 and 2, it says, Blessed is the man who endures till the end. Blessed is the man who endures till the end. Wow, that's a tremendous statement. You know, <clears throat> I, um, I've, I've used this before, but <clears throat> uh, in Guam, there was a gentleman or a man or a soldier <clears throat> that it was with the Japanese Imperial Army. And he, they were, there was a fierce battle in Guam with the Marines against the Empire of, of, of China. And there was a lot of blood loss, there was a lot of people died, and Marines and ultimately won the battle and they pushed back the Japanese. <clears throat> Well, in 1945, when the war ended, there was, that when the war ended, there was no more need for, uh, for us to attack Guam. We set up bases and the whole thing. <clears throat> but 25 years later, they found a guy. His name was Choichi Yokoi. 25 years after the war ended, he was still in his bunker defending his position. His clothes wore out, so he made new ones. His weapons wore out, so he made new ones. And, and you look at that situation and you think, man, this, this guy lost his marbles. I mean, literally... I mean, he, he saw all the leaflets that were dropping on top of him that were, that were saying that the war is over, but he thought it was just propaganda. So he kept standing his ground. He was waiting for orders from his commanding officer. You might think of him as a, a fool. Uh, I mean, a little bit off. Totally uninformed. But... Th Think, just think for a minute about the dedication and about the enduring fight that was going on in this man's heart. This man would just not give up. He would not give up. They had to take him by force. 25 years after the war ended, they had to take him by force. His wife divorced him. His children didn't recognize him, but he went back to Japan and he was a hero in Japan. I think of that story and I think, <clears throat> what dedication, what loyalty, what commitment he had. You know, think about that for a second. And he never lost faith. He still thought they were going to win the war. I 
would like to have a heart like Joichi Yokoi. Come hell or high water, stand my ground, move forward, protect my territory, protect my place, wait for orders from my commanding officer, which is Jesus Christ. Wow. That's an incredible story. And you can look it up on your YouTube or whatever, Google. It's an incredible story. And when I heard that story, I was like, oh my gosh, I want to be like that soldier. Committed. Devoted. Devoted, un Loyal. unrelenting. Staunch. Nothing phased him. Steadfast. I mean, it was just a, he had a steadfast heart and he was going to stand his ground. Does that describe you? This final it needs, you need, we, need to, we need to allow ourselves to be like that and to have that kind of heart. When Jesus comes and we never know when he's going to come. But you know what? We need to be found standing our ground. You know? My wife and I went to a garage sale one time and uh, my wife got off and I stayed in the, in the car and I was just waiting for her to look over uh, some more stuff to bring into the garage. Hello? Okay, never mind. We're not going to go there. Yay! But uh, I was sitting there waiting for her and there was an old beat of van that was parked on the curb. And I, I noticed the van and I kind of looked around, but then I noticed that they had a bumper sticker in the back window. And the bumper sticker said, Jesus is coming soon, look busy. Wow. I, I, I laughed, but at the same time it ministered to me. We need to get about the Father's business. We need to get going. We need to start doing what God's called us to do. We never know when he's going to come. See, and when we have, when, when, when what we're doing is connected to purpose, then all of a sudden the waiting doesn't seem so bad. The waiting doesn't seem bad at all because we know that he's coming soon and we're going to go in the rapture with Jesus Christ. Oh, that is, to me, that is a very awesome situation. Everybody leaned on Jesus. Everybody leaned on God to, 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 uh, to get support. It says in, in Psalms 9.10, it says, For those that know thy name will put their trust and, will, and who put their trust in thou, O Lord, has not forsaken those who seek you. The Lord has not forsaken those that seek you. Seek in other words, he, he's looking forward to those that are seeking him that are chasing after him to gain because he said the world uh, is, the world is looking for support and we, we and our support comes from heaven and then there's uh, <clears throat> there in Psalm 22 and 8 it says commit yourself to the Lord let him deliver him let him rescue him because he delights in him when Jesus Christ when we delight in Jesus Christ, he delights in us, and he rescues us. Matthew 27, 43. That's the story of the, of the woman. A woman that she didn't really belong. She was a sinner. She didn't really belong because during that time, um, women were not allowed in to sit with the men when the men were in the room together. Women just served, and then they got out of the way. And it was just men. And Jesus was sitting with the men. And this lady, who was obviously a sinner, maybe an adulteress or a thief or something, and she, she sat outside with a, 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 a bottle of perfume or a box of perfume. And she wanted to get she she wanted to get close to Jesus because she wanted to anoint his body and every step she took from the door to Jesus she was facing internal fears insecurity chastisement condemnation shame she was facing that because all the disciples that were the people that were in that room that were they were saying 
How can she even be in this room? How can Jesus even pay attention to her? Because she's a sinner. She was facing internal struggles and she was facing external struggles. As she, The more she got closer to Jesus, the worse it got. But she knew one thing. She says, I've got to get to Jesus somehow. And I've got to fight through all of that to get to him. And when she got to him, the Bible says that her eyes were full of tears. And she washed his feet with her hair. Just like the Zacchaeus. And she poured oil, precious anointing oil, from his head down to his toes. I, I don't know about you, but this lady broke all the social norms, all the customs, all the, the, the things that are considered acceptable in society. She broke all every law, every rule, and every custom. But she knew one thing. She had to get to Jesus. And she had to anoint him with oil. And it was shortly thereafter that Jesus was captured, betrayed, and then he was crucified. Beaten and then crucified. And while he was on the cross, with his hands nailed and his feet nailed to the wood, getting insults from the people that were hanging with him, Jesus Christ felt alone. Because Jesus, because God the Father, God the Father, cannot look at sin. And Jesus became sin for us. And for a brief moment, God turned his face away from Jesus. And in that moment, he said, why have you forsaken me? He was with God the Father from the beginning of eternity. And just that moment, when Jesus, when God turned his back on Jesus because he became sin for us, he said, why have you forsaken me? And then he felt all alone. But then all of a sudden, that precious smell of the anointing oil went up into his nostrils. It had been covered with oil, anointing, aromatic oil. And as he smelt that oil, the odor of that oil going into his nostrils. He said, someone cared enough for me to give me their very, very best. I don't know about you guys, but that to me is a tremendous act of faith. Tremendous act of faith. Where faith removes every obstacle. Faith removes every fear. You see? Faith is the thing that will win the day. It will get us to heaven. And faith is something that we need to hold on to, even though the whole world is going nuts, like it is now. Even if the whole world is going nuts, continue to have faith in Jesus, continue to have faith in God, believe his word, and you will see that deliverance will come. Psalm 22 and 8. Oh, I already read that. Psalm, uh, he was against what the Jews were saying because he knew exactly what to do to save us. The Jews wanted him to take over in a military style, to take over and to conquer the Roman Empire and to set himself up as king. And when he didn't do that, the Jews turned away from him and they betrayed him and they had him crucified. Our faith has to be intact. Cowardly advice, flesh, in the Lord I take refuge. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to the mountain? For behold, the wicked bend the bow. They're trying to get to me. They're trying to kill me. 
And God is saying, the answer is, or he, David himself says, but I'm not worried because God is with me and God will rescue me and he will give me new life. You see, when faith is under attack, that is the worst kind of defeat that we can experience. Our faith has to be strong. Our faith must be strong. And faith has to be everything. You see? And so when, when we talk about faith, and when we talk about how our faith is attacked, it could be attacked in a number of ways. By the world, by the devil, and even testings from God. But a lot of times our own worst enemy is us. Because we allow the world to distract us. We allow the world to get us into a different frame of mind to where we become victims instead of victorious. We are conquerors, more than conquerors. That's what Romans 8 says. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. And so we must remember who we are. We must remember who is our general. And we must remember where our reward will be. We must remember those things. And God gave us a, a map on how to get there with the Word of God. He gave us the power through the Holy Spirit on how to get there. And He gave us the ultimate goal, which is heaven bound for eternity. And I thank you, Lord, for giving us such a precious promise and such faith that we can overcome anything. Doesn't matter what people say, doesn't matter what people do, it doesn't matter what the world says. We will overcome. I've read the back of the Bible and we win. We are victorious. The church is victorious. Jesus Christ is going to rule over everyone. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hitler will bow. Mussolini will bow, all uh, Hirohito will bow, all the evil people in the world will bow and confess his name before the throne of God. Well, I can't, I can't, I, I can't even wait for that. But see, for us Christians, we're going to be around the throne, serving Jesus Christ, serving God, singing praises to his name, honoring Him and serving Him for all eternity. We must, we must increase and not let our faith be the target for the devil. We must have a strong faith and we must believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and God the Father is reigns over everything physical, spiritual, he reigns over everything. And so I leave you with that. But I want you to know, I want you to know that if your faith is failing you right now, feed that dog. Feed that dog. Make that faith, make your spirit man stronger. And then he will overcome the fear, the uh, the anxiety, the stress, he will, he will overcome all those things on your behalf because you're one of his soldiers and he will provide everything that you need to win and to overcome. May God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and lift up your confidence, your confidence and give you peace. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you overwhelm the body of Christ, Lord, with supernatural faith, Lord, to believe and to receive the word of God, Lord, and not to listen to anything else, not to listen to the lies of the world, the news media, or even our own emotions and fears. Lord, we're not going to listen to any of those. We're going to listen to the word of God, and the word of God has to be the absolute truth for our life. And we thank you, Lord, that you bless every person that's listening, that you allow them to share this teaching with other people, and that you would 
yourself, Lord. Manifest yourself in the hearts of every person that hears this message. And I thank you, Lord. And I give you all the glory, Lord. Give you all the honor and all the praise. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. But goodbye, everybody. Sophia, Joseph, Hannah, Aaron, Alex. Veronica, Jessica. Veronica, Jessica. God bless you guys. We love you. Bye-bye.